researching for the Amiga Quantum Leap project, I found quite a lot of things which turned out to be leading the world in a brave new line of technology. We've seen how much of an impact the Amiga had on the music industry and its videos, but it all started way back with Mandala from Vivid Group Inc. In 1986, a small group of college graduates from Toronto in Canada, sometimes calling themselves Very Vivid or Vivid Group Inc., created a programmable version of the video play software called Mandala Studio for the Commodore Amiga computer. Like a modern day Kinect or iToy, the Mandala Studio enabled analog video sources to be scanned and read by the computer as a moving bitmap image. With edge perfect collision detection, and the user could interact with objects on the screen and trigger events and animations in an early form of interactive multimedia. In this realm, there was no need for a touchscreen when you could move items and play games with a wave of your hand, and no gloves or special VR equipment was necessary. The system was used for interactive museum tours, virtual walkthroughs, and apparently during rock concerts, and a number of DJs used this kit during parties and raves. The Vivid group were actually a small number of University of Waterloo graduates who mostly worked on the software and the software interfaces for the hardware. The kit consisted of an Amiga 1000 or 500 computer, a video camera, a genlock, a digitizer, and the whole process depended on the bit planes of resolution selected to generate the image, with higher bit planes slowing the process down to 10 frames per second, while lower res could handle up to 20 frames per second. The system became a cult hit in 1987 and was relaunched in 1991 for only $495. It came with several programs and games, including an interactive music creator and games where you had to avoid things shown on the screen. Very Vivid also released their own VR system in 1992 based on their own bespoke hardware and which used shutter glasses. This retailed for over $15,000 at the time, which makes the Commodore Amiga version very rare indeed. Mandala was named by Popular Science magazine as one of the top new breakthrough technologies of the year 1990. Now I'd like to read an extract from a post by Colin Plum who posted this on a news group in 1987. He writes, excuse me if the following post is a trifle incoherent. Mandala is so amazing that I feel obliged to lose my head and rave. Very Vivid is a Toronto company that has come with a system called Mandala that's most interesting. Basically, it takes real-time digitized images, transforms it into a silhouette, and displays it on the screen. Getting more advanced, there's a background, and the image is redrawn 10 to 20 times a second, depending on the complexity of the background. It can be animated, do color rotation, etc. Even more advanced, there are gadgets, to use Amiga terminology, on the screen. Your silhouette can do anything with these gadgets like a mouse. They had the computer hooked up to a MIDI bus and the person's movements were controlling the instruments. It's kind of weird to be drumming in thin air, yet have it sound as if you're hitting something. They had a harp and Mayan temple where you played hydroglyphics. They also had a Toronto skyline with the tops of the tallest buildings acting as drums. Freaky. They had a public demo running where you could touch gadgets on the screen to change the instruments used. And then you could go and play them in a number of ways by touching other gadgets that could shift the screen into a different image. Like the aforementioned harp, the room made of xylophone tubes and outdoor scenes where will-o'-the-wisp balls sang. You could also go into body paint program where multiple images of you appeared in different colour cycles and a program where balls dropped from above and you could bat them away to appropriate sound effects. One of the more interesting programs was a birds program where two birds would fly directly into the screen and if they hit you they'd transform into balls on your hands, actually at the outer extremes of your body so elbows and other funny things were possible. You could shake them off, in which case they'd chirp and fly away, only to come back in a few seconds. 
visual effect was absolutely amazing. A verbal description is less than one thousandth as interesting as seeing it for yourself. But I have to try. The software can handle essentially any sort of interaction a silhouette can have with its environment. Leaders to say it runs on a stock Amiga. Well, actually, it does need a real-time frame grammar board and a bit of expansion memory if you really want to show it off. But it could probably do with 512K. If you want, you can fiddle around with the gen lock so the silhouette is actually your image. Not with the current gen lock, but there's supposed to be one in the works that will replace arbitrary colours with the video, not just one. Now by that description, that person was very impressed with the kit provided and it went largely unknown in America and the rest of the world for quite some time. And the world actually took it for granted sometimes that the kit was invisible. So I'd just like to show you at the end of this film two promotion videos, one of them showing Mandala in action. And the second piece of film is a game called Eat a Bug and Eat a Bug was a game made for a kids TV show in America called Total Panic which aired in the very early 1990s and for both of those films I'd just like to thank Amiga NG, Amiga Next Generation and the Amiga NG channel on YouTube and I hope in the future many more of these clips will be uncovered and I hope that we can find some more Amiga firsts. Thank you. The Mandela program is a perfect example of multimedia. The camera shoots the hand, which triggers computer events, in this case, MIDI instruments. What makes the Amiga unique to us at Tom Lee is the fact that it neatly addresses the world of video technology, music technology, and computer graphics, all from one central workstation. Myron Kruger of the Artificial Reality Corporation is credited with being the first computer researcher to find a way into the virtual world. His video place has become a meeting point for reality hackers. Imagine becoming your own shadow and being able to interact with other people's shadows in a simulated space, to touch them and to be touched. Kruger's aim is to create just such a shadow world, where people can relate to each other in a way quite impossible in the physical realm. It was as if evolution had prepared us for seeing ourselves on uh, television screens combined with computer images. But also, the main, one of the main attractions is the juxtaposition of large and small, so that the two people will now interact and, and to some extent discover what uh, the possibilities are, what is suggested emotionally by, by scale. And this is just is part of the general video place concept of people getting together uh, in the artificial reality. In other words, what, what's happening now between the two people is that we are now interacting in a way that humans have never, never could. What you're looking at right now is a unique television show for and about children, and it's called Total Panic. Total Panic uses the Amiga as a regular part of its production in an interactive game segment, Eat a Bug. Hey, you guys, it's time to play Eat a Bug, and this is a very special game for us here at Total Panic because we were the first ones to ever put kids into video games. So uh, let me tell you how it's played, but first I want you to meet our first player. What's your name? Charlie. Okay, Charlie, this is how you play. You start out by... Let's see if I can hit this bug with my hand and get things going. The idea of the game is to eat as many bugs as possible by hitting them with your hand. As you eat them, spiders like this guy is going to come down. Now, let me get up here. If this spider hits me, well, there's another bug. I got the bug. If this spider hits me like that, ooh, the jaws are going to come down and bite us, and that is worth one life. In the course of this game, you have a minute and a half or three lives. Now, along with the evil spider, there's also a pretty maniacal centipede and a bumblebee that has a mean bite. Let's see. That'll be our second life. Okay, so we've got to avoid those three characters and meanwhile eat as many what bugs as possible. What is this show about? Well, it's a kids' variety show. We try targeting uh, an audience of 8 to 12-year-olds, and it goes a lot either way. Like, you know, I end up watching the show and enjoying it. Um, we have uh, guests. We have arcade-type games. We have uh, interviews. Uh, we also have a segment which uh, has video games and computer games that we review also. Um, 
the segment that you are directly involved with is called Eat a Bug, right? That's right. Okay, now this has to do, you use an Amiga. For, well, how do you use it? Well, um, the Amiga makes it all possible. Um, Eat a Bug was a game that was designed by uh, Dean Friedman. On, uh, con, you know, he's an outside consultant that came and developed the game. Um, the game, it's, it's an interesting game. Um, you have to see it really to appreciate it. We have a kid standing in front of a chroma key backdrop, and we take the, uh, the output from that into you know the Amiga. It's fed through a digitizer, and um, the game... You see the kid actually in a computer environment. You see a live video image, and the kid is interacting with all these weird bugs, like you know, giant flies, spiders, centipedes, and they're just, you know, it looks really wild. Doesn't it work on some kids that uh, they, they get out there, and it's a chroma key, which means there's nothing there, and they're supposed to be eating bugs and grabbing bugs, and they can't see anything? That's the thing. I mean, it's hard to describe, and they sort of get the idea when you're describing it to them, but they don't really quite get it until they actually have the setup in front of them, because they concentrate on the monitor that's in front of them. We have a reverse scan monitor, and they can see, you know, because uh, weathermen have the problem. When they're looking at a monitor, it's reversed. So when they move this way, it looks like they're moving that way. So for the, to make it even easier for the kids, we reverse the scan. So they're seeing it in reverse, and, you know, they see the images, and they get the idea that there's nothing behind them. They have to look at that. And, you know, it's, it's disorienting at first, but eventually they get it. Why an Amiga? Well, uh, the Amiga is the only machine that can do it. I mean, I'm trying to think. The only, uh, we'd have to get hardware that was dedicated to do this kind of thing. I mean, we'd actually have to, like, get someone to develop a circuit board and put it together because the Amiga's got the hardware already in it, like collision detection is, it is built into the hardware. And that's a, a critical element in the Mandala software, which is the software that this environment runs under. You use that exclusively, right? Yes, it's the only software that could do it. It's, it's got an interesting history about it, too. I mean, uh, Dean Friedman, he uh, happened to have a developer's unit of it, and so he was able to develop this game, you know, for us. Um, who brought the Amiga into the show? Well, um, James Bethia is um, our senior segment producer, and a while back, he, um, he's always had an Amiga, an Amiga 1000, and, you know, he's an Amiga enthusiast, and... Um, after seeing Mandala demonstrated at um, an Amiga users group, he realized that it could be put into this type of interactive game, and so he developed a game called like, Swatabug a while back, uh, quite a while back. And, you know, it was probably, the, you know, it's where Eat a Bug came from, from that, oh, that oh, concept. Oh, gosh, they're all after him. They're all after him. Will he do it in time? There's a wasp up there. Maybe he can get it. Yeah! Oh! 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 I can't believe it. That... Oh, gosh. So close. How does it feel, though? You, you've you scored higher on the bug game than anybody so far. How does it feel? Okay. Okay. He's very calm about his victories, but uh, next time you're going to get him, right? Yeah. All right. Let's go to Greg.